So we've got Adam, Adam here from 3D Tech and he's coming to scan the Porsches for us. So we're going to try and pick up all the front end, front end of the 718 strut tops and the dash and the A pillars and see how that's going to interfere with our 356. So we end up with two files that we can overlay um, and look for the interference, try and make some cuts or predetermine if this is going to work before we get too far. So he's just rocked up. He's in the middle of setting up at the moment, calibrating his machine. Let's go have a chat to him and he can tell us what's going on. All right, Adam, so we're gonna 3D scan this thing. Just give us the, um, I mean, you got all this beautiful, this beautiful gear here and this handpiece. Just give us a rundown, what's going on, how it all works. Yeah, so we just got some markers out um, to 3D scan the car and the other body. Um, so the tracker will follow the markers around. The handpiece is, is followed by the tracker. Um, and that'll capture all the data of the car. We'll be able to like, overlay the two cars and see where things need to be cut and shaped and, and modified for. So when you say markers, you're talking about these yeah. dots. So these reflective markers here. Oh yeah. Um, so that's like a GPS location for the tracker to understand where it is in relation um, to the rest of the car. And, and the parts, this, yeah. this unit over here is the tracker? Yep, so this is your tracker. So that is dynamic. So that will literally move around the car. That will then the markers will tell it where it is, where it isn't. Um, and in old school terms, the markers effectively become a, a datum, like it's a three dimensional in space exactly. datum. Yep, because the car's in space, it doesn't know where it's at. So these actually capture within re reference to each other. And then that way, then when you bring it into a computer, then you can start aligning things to, you know, a coordinate system, which gives you front and back, middle, middle of the car, that sort yeah. of thing. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. Man, this is awesome. Thanks so much for coming in and doing this. Right. This is going to move yeah. us ahead pretty quick, bringing the two cars together. and 100%. This, this will be next level for, for how you can actually see the two overlay and where you need to cut things and shape things. Yeah. Awesome. Definitely. All right. So. Well, I, I know I, I walked in when you are about to get started, so I might right. just, I'll, I'll just film as you go, but just let you get into it. Cool. No worries. All right. So we've got a feeling, just by looking at this, that all this area top of this strut tower, this brace, all this A pillar, and even across the front end here, is nowhere near gonna fit under the front end of this little 356 here. The strut tops will be way out here somewhere under the fenders, for sure, with the rough tape measure calculations. Um, the front nose of this, you can see just by looking at it, how square the 718 is across the front, in front of that front wheel there, up in this area how flat that comes across. Compared to the 356, we're here, it's really dropping away really fast. So rather than cut and test and cut and test and refit and refit, we're gonna go for the 3D scan option. We're just setting up to do that now. Adam's just calibrating his machine. We're gonna find a datum. And the idea is we get some 3D math so we can basically sit on the couch on the computer screen and overlay these two and work out how they interfere with each other. So that first one you're doing now, that's just to set, set the datums for the whole job? Yeah. And then you put that down and then scan it with the Handpiece. Yeah, so that pretty much lays out the car, and then this becomes dynamic to, to go around the rest of the car with without having to do different stages and join them all together. It makes it fully dynamic, so. Cool.
Finger leaking good this time. <laughs> Got this front section of the 356 just sitting here on the stands so we can get under it. We want to come right in underneath here. Right in under the firewall, down the A pillars, across the floor. See how much of that we need to remove to get over onto the 718. Fender's all been cut off. However, for this whole project, we're gonna use these hinge points through here on the A pillar. That'll become our datum for the whole car. Because from here forward, we can set our wheelbase. We know our wheelbase from here back but also from our measurements, the whole car can be set from this. We know this is vertical. We've also got a width through here, which is like a wider dimension. So we can put that into math after we scan as well, build out the car from there. And we've got our hood opening. So this will give us the location of our struts. Why are you wearing glasses inside? <laughs> uh, we're actually using augmented reality glasses to um, see the computer screen on the fly in the glasses. Uh, it's like virtual reality, but you can still see your surroundings. So the screen on the laptop in the back of the van, you're seeing that in your glasses at the same time? Yeah, so it makes it totally portable, um, cable free. Still have a hand to hold on to for safety reasons, things like that. So it um, just makes it really easy to get around things without having, having to have the computer right next to you or drag it around beside you. And, and um, yeah, it just makes it a lot easier and a lot safer. It's a bit fancy for your high tech there. Yeah, yeah it's, um, it's kind of the next level, I guess, in, in what we do. Um, yeah, but de definitely a lot safer on job sites and, you know, um, the safer you can be, the better you are, so yeah. Cool, dude. Thank you. So, what do we have? We've got the front end there. Yeah, front end. Dash around here. Front windscreen. Pretty much all the detail you'll need. Awesome. Yeah. So we'll be able to get that file and then just overlap it to the other one, which we've got, which is the 718 file. Turn this to 718 file. We can just overlap them, right? Pretty much, yeah. We'll just work out the coordinate systems for these. Give them a, a middle plane, uh, top plane and a front plane, and then we can overlay the two and offset as we need to to determine where it's going to sit on the body over the struts. Um, and yeah, work out what we need to do from there. Cool, let's see how much more chopping we've got. Yeah. Thanks for Excuse coming, mate. dude. No worries. That's awesome. No worries, we'll get it sorted. Um, chop this out with a 3D scan of yep. both cars. Perfect. So if you guys, if anyone wants to scan, um, in Australia at least, or in, especially in New South Wales, yep. Contact Adam, yep. 3D Tech, and I'm uh, looking forward to doing a whole lot more together on this one. For sure. Cool. Let's, let's get it done. All right, we'll see you next time. Sweet. Got the exhaust and the heat shield pulled out. This uh, brace under here had to remove under the rear here. Had to remove these other braces, like rear sort of subframe supports. Had to take them out just to get the heat shield out, but they're back in there now. And 
time to build a bit of brace. So, just got this bit of RHS steel thrown across here. I'm gonna weld that to this. That can be a slider. Just need to build a riser. I'll probably come in under here. So there's a nice solid bolt near chassis rail. So we'll just build a riser in here for that whole rear support. Let's make that. With the exhaust gone, just made this frame here, mounts up to the rail, got the car centered on the table. So we are finally at a point where this is all mounted, secured, jigged, supported, whatever you want to call it, ready to cut it here. So just underneath here, I think we'll probably, oh, I might look at dropping this fuel tank. This subframe brace thing here, we'll probably take this out so we can get these two coolant lines. All up in the tunnel, there is so many different lines. There's brake lines, fuel lines, wiring, tubes going the different things here and there. So all those come out, get rid of this brace, the next one and the next one. A little bit of wiring in here. Because we really want to get up into this tunnel up in here, probably remove all this glue seam and all these spot welds around here so when we shift this tunnel back we can use all these flanges to re-rivet to but anyway we've got to get all this cleaned out so that we can chop through the floor and not chop through any of these essentials ac lines are really cool we can just undo this one and undo it here so this will just drop out let's get that done and that'll be done in about one second front end all jigged up here and braced nice and square cut down this other support and we eventually got everything out from that tunnel so everything under there is gone ready to cut another brace we can see all these here all these spot welds whether we we'll have to grind those out we won't get a, a spot weld drill in there at all We're still chopping down this car. You know, we've taken the side of this car off, left top of the A-pillars and the front end. We need to work our way down into here. You know, thankfully you just seen, Adam rocked up and 3D scanned a whole lot of it for us. He's 3D scanned the 718 and then he's 3D scanned the 356. And then he set up like a datum, a plane. Uh, he overlaid the two files. We've set, you know, I mentioned a whole bunch of times, we've set the A-pillar, the hinge post on the 356 body as a datum. Then from there we're out to reference our wheelbase. So we found our wheel centers on the 718, cross-referenced the 356, made the wheelbase change that we discussed in the previous video, and then he started to overlay the bodies. And now with this 3D file, we can rotate, zoom in, spin around, and really find exactly where the interference is and where the file, where the, the two bodies are gonna overlap. You know, we've got a lot of concerns around the top of the strut towers, especially if they come through the front fenders. And then where we're going to come in and cut this A-pillar here, you can see we've stripped out a whole bunch of the sill and the rocker 
off the side of the 718, which I want to talk about a little bit more in a second. However, that'll really give us the ability to find exactly where on this A pillar the two bodies will join together and integrate. There's a seam halfway across the firewall, which will come through the bottom of the A pillar, and it's going to give us this great way to find the intersection point. And, you know, we might even have a shot at fabricating or designing the sheet metal where, they, where the two intersect. We might have a shot at doing that in 3D. We're going to have to learn some 3D modeling, but I'm pretty excited by that. That sounds pretty cool. We can laser cut it and fold it. Anyway, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, but now that we've got these 3D files, it's incredible. We can really start to get into it and fine tune some measurements and figure out how these two things are going to join together.